Hello everyone, welcome to this new Tezos Research Seminar. And today's speaker is June Fosse. Uh, so June has studied type system at Kyoto University uh, and then he got a PhD at INRIA in France. So June is interested in applying programming language theory to critical system. Uh, he, has done, he has jumped into the financial industry since 2008 to build secure and robust modeling systems. Uh, two years ago, he founded Dai Lambda and joined the development of the Tezos blockchain, bringing his 25 years of OCaml programming experience. And uh, June is here today to speak about uh, Playbeya, which is a new storage layer for the Tezos blockchain states. So, uh, hello, uh, my name is June, and uh, I'm going to talk about Playbeya today. Uh, so, so I was supposed to ask, uh, introduce myself, but uh, Vansan has already uh, almost explained my background. So let 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 me skip my uh, bio. And uh, well, we have yes, uh, we have built a new company called Dai Lambda in uh, in Kyoto here in Japan, uh, and uh, it's it's about two years ago. And our team is six people, and the three of us are full-time engineers. And we are working for Tezos. Um, well, yeah, this is a company, Tezos Specialized. And our main task is uh, core development. Uh, well, say, Playbayer, which I'm going to talk today. And we also develop some uh, development, uh, small tools for Tezos. And we also working for uh, local Japanese Tezos community development, especially for uh, communication for full of engineers who are interested in using uh, Tezos uh, blockchain technology. Okay, so today's talk is about Playbayer, uh, which we are working on currently. Uh, this is a new stage for Tezos blockchain state. So I'm going to talk about uh, roughly in this uh, way about the Tezos context first, and the mentions about macro proofs. And uh, we introduced Prebea 3, which should uh, improve or optimize this macro proof in Tezos node, a uh, Tezos blockchain. And we explain how we integrate this Prebea in our Tezos integrated, uh, Prebea integrated Tezos node. And we conclude uh, uh, my talk, uh, by uh, future work, okay? So uh, if you, let's start from uh, Tezos context. So if you uh, check uh, your Tezos node data directory, then you will find two subdirectories here called store and context. And uh, one, the first one store is to use to keep blocks or block headers or block uh, operations and the protocol calls and uh, called uh, protocols and so on. And the latter one, uh, context, is store blockchain state. So blockchain state is a, a database of, of the state of the a blockchain database where you can query your balance of uh, the balance of your account and so on. So this blockchain state is updated for each uh, by each blocks stored in the store. So therefore there are a bunch of versions of blockchain state. And these are uh, all states are called contexts. And the, these contexts are con version controlled in this context of database system using their hashes. And the player that I'm going to talk today is to optimize this LATA uh, directory, the LATA database uh, context. So if you look inside Tezos context, uh, you can find these uh, files. Uh, this is a complete list of possible uh, file names inside Tezos context. So Tezos context is a Unix-like directory and the file structure. Yes, and it's version controlled by, uh, as I have said, a hash called context hash. Uh, <clears throat> And the context hash is, uh, well, actually, this is a root macro hash of the file system. Okay, so macro hash is a kind of, well, yes, it's a hash of the hash of the tree, and uh, it's recursively defined. You know, uh, hash of the directory is defined by the accumulation of the hashes of sub 
sub, uh, sub, uh, sub elements uh, concatenated together then put in a hash function. And using this context hash, uh, contexts are identified in Tezos. That means that if two contexts has different context hashes, then we are sure that these contexts are different. And if these two uh, contexts have the uh, identical context hash, then we can, well, bravely say that these contexts are identical. So th using this context hash, this context data, con many versions of context are uh, version uh, control just like Git. And using this hash, so uh, queries are done like this. So I say that there is a client uh, sending RPC query to get his uh, account balance at block B. Then the node finds a context hash of uh, HB of block B in the store. Then it checks out the version of the context of hash B. Then it finds uh, data at the uh, uh, this pass contract index, your contract uh, public hash, then balance. So, so it finds a, a value of this file in the con uh, checked out context and it returns to you as a client. So it works fine, but there's a big problem because a client here, the client must trust the node. So there's a no way to verify the uh, read result is really correct one. So if some malicious person build a malicious, maliciously modified node, and if you connect to this maliciously modified node, then this node can lie any, and return any kind of value of your account balance, then you are uh, completely messed up with this strange answer from the node. So therefore, uh, yes, uh, the, it's not really secure. But using this Markle hash, uh, using mark, a technique called macro proof, we can use this query more uh, trustless, means that a uh, client can be sure that the node answer is correct. So we use uh, macro proof uh, for this purpose. So macro proof is, what is macro proof? So macro proof is uh, the same as the original uh, tree, but only contains what the proof want to prove. So here it's a, a file content of this this file is a what the proof want to uh, prove with some minimal hash set of hashes enough to reconstruct the top macro hash of the original context receiving this macro hash a uh, macro proof from the node and the client also needs to load uh, official uh, agreed uh, Markle hash of the, uh, the co corresponding context tree from the blockchain network, then uh, the client can rebuild uh, the top Markle hash of this proof and uh, check it that this hash is equal to the what is believed correct in the blockchain network. And uh, if it is, uh, if it, they are the same, since it is almost impossible to create uh, <clears throat> completely different macro proof with the same hash. It's almost impossible to create it intentionally. So therefore the client can believe that macro proof is uh, valid. So therefore the value contained in a uh, macro proof is also trustable. So it works fine here, but uh, that there's a problem since the macro proofs uh, tend to be very huge in, 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 in this system since uh, the node has uh, many, can, uh, each node can possibly have many sub nodes, and it requires hashes of these sub nodes, uh, all of these sub nodes. So, therefore, uh, trees with many sub nodes uh, produces really huge macro proofs. And we really don't want to have this kind of huge uh, proofs at all. Here, uh, Playbear comes in. So Plavia is mainly uh, designed to provide a storage, natively supports very compact macro proofs. So it is uh, designed used based on the uh, binary macro Patricia try with a bunch of optimizations for storage. And it uses functional updates using zipper. 
and uh, storage is, uh, is up and down. Okay, so let's start begin. Uh, let's start start with a uh, binary Markov binary Markov Patricia tree, uh, which play Bayer tree uh, based on. So this is a binary tree first of all, and it's a Patricia tree, which means that uh, each edge of the binary tree is labeled with a non-empty string of uh, alphabets. So alphabets here we use. L left and R right, so one, zero or one bit. Okay, so this Patricia tri uh, structure is better for sparse structures than non Patricia tri, and uh, it's really have a good match with Tezos context since Tezos context file system is also a sparse structure. And uh, each node is also hashed, so here H1, H5, H6, and so on. So <clears throat> Each node have macro hash attached, and the calculation how to calculate these macro hashes are quite uh, yeah usual. So let me skip it. So this is binary macro Patricia tri. So if we if we define this binary macro Patricia tri in uh, OCaml or any other language, it's pretty simple to define. So we define segment. Segment uh, here is a List of these LR bits, and we have defined a uh, type with li, li. So the type of the uh, macro pathology try is either D4 branch, and, and it has some information here. So it's straightforward and simple, but there's uh, one big problem since it, the type is really unbalanced. That is, leaf consists of one pointer to the value. And one hash, and the branch constructor consists. Uh, so the constructor has two segments and the two pointers, two subnodes, and one hash. Since pointer is relatively smaller than hash and the segments, since segments can, well, here in this example they are pretty short, but they can be really long. So uh, compared to segment and the hash, pointers are really small. Then. Uh, size of the branch is as uh, three times uh, many, uh, three times as much as a uh, leaf. So therefore, uh, these two constructors have really different size to the store in our storage. So this is not really good match if we want to use fixed size uh, data uh, record on a storage. So here, Plebeia tree uh, solves the problem of this unbalancedness of uh, binary macro Patricia tri. <clears throat> so this is a, a macro Patricia tri, but it's a variant, and the provides uh, so solves the problem of unbalancedness by balanced type definition, and it also supports directories. So direct, since Tezos context has the directory structure, so it would be uh, nice to have the same. Uh, corresponding node in a tree. So this is upgraded, uh, well, uh, sim upgraded, but yet simplified definition of a uh, plebeia tree. So here, uh, branches uh, we have seen in the uh, macro Patricia tree, macro Patricia tree is split into uh, two constructors called internal and extender. Yeah. So internal is basically just a provider branching, and it has two subnodes, and uh, these edges are uh, <coughs> labeled only one alphabet, L or R. So to support more than one uh, length of uh, labels, we introduce extender in, in addition. So this extender has only one subnode, but may have more than one length of alphabets. So the definition is like this, and uh, you may find that this extender node has no hash information uh, other, compared to the other constructors. They are always hashes. But this is since there's no need to record hash of extenders at all, since a hash of extender is immediately cheaply computed from uh, by concatenating the macro hash or the subnode uh, and the segment. 
And we here uh, have also our uh, special node for directories called bud. So it has a <coughs> sub node pointer to the sub node and the hash of itself. Since a directory can be empty, so uh, it has an option type here. So this is a roughly uh, simplified uh, type of definition of plebeia tree. Okay. So uh, the, the so the last example of Marco Patricia try is can be expressed in uh, this this form of plebeia tree, and uh, you can uh, notice that uh, in branching with uh, with a label with more than one alphabet LLL here is split it into one internal node and one extender here. So LLL is split it to R and RL. Otherwise, uh, it's almost it's almost as identical. Okay. So this uh, balanced type of definition really uh, helps the uh, efficient compact storage format uh, using the uh, fixed size recording. In Tezos, we use 32 byte fixed cell storage for uh, to store these uh, plebeia nodes. So, in 32 bytes of, uh, of of each cell, the last four bytes are used to uh, pointers, a pointer to uh, the content of the leaf, of the or a pointer to a sub node of internal extender or bud. And the other 28 bytes are usually used for hash or segment. Okay. And you may notice that uh, so even though internal node have two sub nodes, but there's only one explicit uh, pointer in a uh, in a storage 32 by cell. So uh, you may wonder it's a bit strange, but it's okay since uh, there's no need to have another to record another. Uh, Another pointer, since uh, one of the internal node, uh, one of the sub node of internal node is always stored just a prior cell of this internal. Since we use functional update for uh, Playbear tree, and uh, we also use append only uh, storage, uh, it's always uh, true that one of the uh, sub node of internal node is always saved just prior to this internal, the, the saving of the internal. So there's no need to uh, have a second uh, pointer here. Okay, so uh, for extender, we don't need to uh, record its hash, but instead we have to uh, record its segment. And the scene segment has no really, uh, no real uh, limitation. It can be, uh, 25, uh, 256 bits, or it can be 520 or something like that. So, so therefore, uh, there is uh, some possibility that this segment information cannot fit within this 28 bytes size. In that case, I uh, extend that we need more than one cells to uh, save extender node, but it's uh, statically speaking, it's really rare. In a production data using Clevier storage, uh, we have only 0.2% of extender who require, whose segments are uh, bigger than 28 bytes. So uh, we can say that almost of all Clevier nodes can fit within this 32 byte cell format. And the macro proof, yes, macro proof in the Plebeia tree is almost straightforward. It's a, it has, so this is an original Plebeia tree, and it's a proof of uh, this leaf, three, three. And this has almost the same identical shape, uh, but uh, an uninteresting part is removed or simplified to the hashes. So the shape are the same. So therefore, uh, tree snapshot of Plebeia tree and the macro proofs of Plebeia tree have the same shape, uh, have, have the same shape. Therefore, uh, they can use the same data encoding or they can share the same file format. So uh, things become really simple. And since using this, we use binary tree, uh, macro proofs can be really compact compared to the 
uh, you know, naive implementation of Markov proof using original Tezos context file system. And in plebeiers, so these plebeier trees are modified, updated using uh, function, uh, purely functionally using zipper. So we, I'm not going to talk about the details of uh, zipper, but uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it is good to uh, more update uh, node deep inside a really huge tree. You know, very efficient uh, way to update structure. So this is an example to add this tree. Uh, uh, this is an example to add a new leaf here uh, under this, this node to this tree. So first the castle points at the top of the element, uh, top of the tree, we shift down there so the at the target of the, uh, the upgrade update. So we change this extender to internal to add a new leaf. Then we move this cursor back to the original position uh, to obtain a complete uh, updated new version of Plebeia tree. Okay, so when when we create a new tree, we well naturally want to commit or save this tree to the storage. So in this case, uh, we first of all we have to compute the hash of newly created. Uh, node. So this is done uh, lazily. And also uh, only newly created node of the new new tree uh, are necessary to be saved to the disk. And we since we use append only data data uh, append only uh, file system so and only these trees are only appended to the uh, data file. Okay. So this uh, laziness is also applied to uh, loading of uh, Playway node from disk to memory. So this is updated, more detailed uh, definition of Playway uh, tree data uh, data structure. So now we have view or disk. So view is something, some nodes which, whose contents are already loaded in memory. So here, uh, details are it can be B for internal or extender or blah blah blah, blah. and the disk is a disk node is uh, a node whose contents is not yet loaded into memory. Therefore, we don't have any details like view. Instead of the view, disk node has an index where uh, which indicates where we can load these contents from the disk. Okay, so disk node is uh, drawn in this figure using this diamond shape. And using this disk node, actually, uh, the last example of adding a new leaf to original tree and obtaining a new tree doesn't really require to load uh, these subtrees at all. So <clears throat> when we, we add, this this uh, new new leaf, we actually don't need to load this subtree under this leaf. Uh, we can keep uh, them as a disk node. And when uh, hashes of newly created node is computed, then at this point we uh, we finally need to know the hash of this this node and this node. Therefore, a player tries to load these uh these uh disk disk uh i'm sorry to load disk node to uh more uh, con concrete views to obtain the hash here h6 and h4 to compute the uh, hashes of newly created node something like this so uh, i have mentioned about append only storage and that uh, uh playway uses it and it's really good for parallelism. And uh, uh, using this append only storage, we can achieve single writer and a multiple reader concurrency without uh, any locking mechanism for free. So it really matches well with the current architecture of Tezos node, where there's a, a one writer called the verifier process. 
and uh, there are a bunch of process other reader processes such as node main process and bakers and other uh, applications which want to use the context well of course mainly to uh, yeah of course to read only for read only and another uh, very important uh, optimization in Plebeia is hash consing to sharing uh, the same nodes physically to reduce the storage in memory and on disk. And if you if you investi investigate uh, Tezos context, then you may find that there are many file values under six, six, 36 bytes are the same. And if these uh, Tezos contexts are encoded to Plebeia trees, there are several uh, small subtrees, uh, especially depths under 10, are uh, often identical. So therefore, these nodes, uh, if these nodes can be unified into one uh, physical node, then we can uh, save a lot of space of uh, in memory and the storage. So this is an example of hash consing, and uh, this is a, a non-hash const uh, example of set representation in Tezos, and it has uh, many leaves with the same contents of the string initted. Now, using hash consing, we can unify these uh, leaves into one, something like that. And for hash consing, we have a small memory cache, uh, only memory cache, uh, to remember a recent used nodes. And this is a, a benchmark uh, of hash consing, uh, taking a snapshot of recent Tezos mainnet uh, context, then encode it to Plebeia node with hash consing with various memory cache sites. So if, without uh, hash consing at all, this tree, recent tree, uh, recent context, uh, Tezos context is encoded to a uh, uh, Plebeia node with nearly 34 million uh, nodes, but with some moderate uh, memory cache for hash consing about 40 to 50 megabytes, uh, this size can be reduced to uh, almost 12 million or something. So it's nearly a one third of the original. So it's really good to shrink down the data file size. And unfortunately, of course, uh, memory, so hash consing is not uh, freely available. So it requires some runtime cost. So the time to uh, you know uh, write these trees without hash consing is much uh, slightly faster than the, uh, when we use hash consing. But I think it's uh, co uh, acceptable difference. And uh, and still, so this hash consing is completely. Uh, configurable. So if you don't really like, uh, if you have a uh, plenty of uh, hard drive space, then you can, yeah, turn off hash consing at all, and then you can enjoy a uh, fast writing. Okay. And as I have, uh, in, well, I didn't introduce myself, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my intro uh, my introduction. I said uh, I I'm interested in. Uh, uh, providing secure uh, software systems for critical uh, system, software for critical systems. So I think formal verification of the, the proof of correctness of Plebeia is also important. So our team has uh, proven several key algorithm correctness of Plebeia uh, using FSTA and Coke, such as uh, tree node invariance, uh, uh, preservation of the tree node invariance and the correctness of basic tree operations such as read, write, and delete as a, as a key value store. And uh, we also pro proved the node correctness of node hash algorithm. That is, it is not really easy to collide a uh, Merkle hash of Plebeia intentionally. And we are currently uh, also proving uh, the correctness low level storage code, I mean, uh, writing and uh, leading through this uh, 32 byte cell uh, storage is uh, they are uh, correctly implemented. Okay, that's about Plebeia. So now let's uh, let me talk about how this Plebeia is integrated into Tezos node. 
So uh, the first of all, what we have to do is path mapping. So since Tezos context is Unix like data structure, uh, file system structure, and the Clevaya is a binary tree, so we have to define how these uh, structures are uh, mapped to Clevaya tree. So as I have introduced uh, earlier, so BART nodes are uh, for to express directories. And the path names uh, for files are, well, of course, uh, translated to binary segments. For example, context will be translated to this kind of binary. And the, by uh, translating uh, path names to segments, this Tezos context, many tree structure is uh, translated down to binary tree of Plebe. So uh, in this mapping, uh, we have uh, some optimizations. Uh, that, uh, <coughs> we have some optimizations. Since uh, translating these ASCII names contract to the same binary or the ASCII text contract is just uh, inefficient. It's too long. For, uh, so here in, in, in Plebeia, Tezos Plebeia integration, uh, names of such as contract is uh, shrink down to the hash, four byte hash of contract to, to have shorter segments for that. And there's no, uh, it, it's safely done since uh, te in Tezos context, these names, set of names are fixed. So therefore we can uh, pre-verify that there is no hash collisions between these names at all. So it's completely uh, safely done. And for hash file, uh, for indices, for, for example, hash file names written in a hex, ASCII characters, or integer file names written in digits are segment converted in their binary form, uh, number, uh, number forms. You know, keeping their ASCII structure is just a waste of space. And using these past completion techniques, we can we could reduce the number of nodes of Plebeia stage about 20 to 30 percent. It's a really good uh, optimization, I would say. And our uh, node with Plebeia works like this. So uh, the point is that uh, in this Tezos node with Plebeia, we have two context systems working in parallel. So original context and the Plebeia context working together, or not together, in parallel. And the same operations, the same context operations, read or get a read or update or deleting uh, some files, uh, all these operations are uh, go through these both systems. And when things are read from the context, as a read results of two systems are compared to check the correctness of Plebeia context implementation. So, so far, we have uh, bootstrapped our Tezos node with Plevia from the Genesis block to uh, recent head. And we have never observed any strange inconsistency between two context systems. So we are quite uh, confident that the Plevia implementation is uh, quite correct compared to the current context systems. And uh, well, the source code is available here, so you, anyone can uh, download and compile and try how it works. And we also implemented uh, RPC calls for macro-proofs using Plebeia trees. So we have now uh, this macro-proof generate RPC call to create uh, macro-proofs of given file names. So we can uh, support multiple values and, or we can even uh, prove non-existence of files using this RPC. And we have, for, for demonstration purpose, we will also uh, provide a validation uh, uh, of uh, macro proofs as an RPC call. So using this, uh, yeah, using this RPC, we can verify uh, the proof is correct or not. Of course, this is pointless since Macro proofs must be verified by the clients themselves. So there's no point to ask uh, softwares owned by someone else to prove 
uh, mapper proof. So, so it's just demonstrates the purpose. So, so client should verify proof by itself. For to do that, we, it needs to implement purveyor tree hash verification, and it also needs to gather purveyor hash of the block somehow from the blockchain network. So this would be a future work for clients when this purveyor will be uh, integrated in Tezos uh, officially one day. So here's a benchmark. Uh, so, so for the space. Uh, so we have uh, monitored uh, disk usage changes uh, of two contexts from the from the genesis to the recent head, and I would say that uh, playbear disk usage is uh, usually between sixty five percent and seventy percent of the current context, so which is uh, good. And for time comparison, so it's very hard to fairly uh, benchmark the time between two context systems. But this is one, sorry, uh, this is one benchmark I have done recently to comparing, uh, to compare times for reconstruct uh, recent 30,000 blocks in uh, both context systems. So Plevier, uh, so in this benchmark, we found that Plevier, uh reconstruction time is 56% of the current context. This is so I would say it's much faster. And uh, we have in a in a current context system, so we have some uh, strange uh, picky uh, blocks which uh, required more than 100 seconds to reconstruct. I, I'm not really sure what why such a long time is required for one block, but anyway, even with uh, ex even with excluding these uh, picky cases, uh, Plebeia is still faster than current context, which seems to be very promising. Okay, so future work. So uh, of course, uh, yeah, Plebeia, we are working on Plebeia for long and uh, we have never uh, officially released any kind of upgrade. So it's a shame. So we, the first objective is to uh, release uh, make Playbear real in a uh, Tezos network. But uh, there's a problem uh, since Playbear itself is a completely different context system than the current one. So therefore, Playbear cannot verify the current context hashes. This means that once the node completely moves from uh, the current context system to the Playbear, then a node cannot uh, verify the past blocks at all. So this is, I think, not really good. So uh, we are currently planning to embed Plebeia tree inside Irmin, the current context system using Tezos, so that Irmin can handle both versions of trees without problems. So that this would be uh, better to uh, verify both versions of context hashes. So this will be done uh, cooperating cooperating with uh, Tarides, the author of uh, current, uh, you mean, uh, the current context for Tezos. We also need a protocol upgrade since context hash changes when we introduce Playbear. So, uh, well, this requires protocol upgrade. And in prior, prior to a protocol upgrade, shell must be also upgraded too since it requires some code to construct Prevea trees and uh, to verify Prevea hashes. And if node is not upgraded with this uh, new shell for Prevea, then this node becomes obsolete and they cannot uh, join the network anymore after the protocol change. So therefore, I think we need some social campaign to encourage uh, Tezos node owners to shell upgrade when uh, the beer is ready. And another issue I preview is a uh, transition time. Since when a uh, previous uh, hash is coming in, then uh, all the context contents of the current context uh, system must be copied to Plebeia tree at some point. 
and it takes really long time. For in my computer, it takes about 20 minutes to copy all the contents from one uh, system to another. And if this transition happens uh, at the very time of the protocol change, this means that full network will stop 20 minutes. And uh, I'm not really like this downtime, long downtime for the player. So I think we need uh, some smooth transition plan is required. Uh, my idea is uh, concurrently slowly prepare a plebeia context uh, before the time of the change, say maybe five days before each node starts to create the uh, plebeia tree of the, at that time of the context and uh, gradually upgrade, update this plebeia tree so that when the protocol change happens, then uh, Plebeia tree or the one uh, block previous version is already ready in uh, in, or already uh, ready in uh, all the nodes so that uh, downtime becomes uh, down, so that uh, so that downtime can be minimized. Okay, so another uh, interesting uh, optimizations using Plebeia or yeah, uh, or something com coming up is uh, fast context access by cursors. So now, uh, currently, uh, each context access is done from the root directory with the absolute uh, full pass. So, uh, for example, let's say that uh, you want, or some protocol or smart contract want to access uh, some balance or some account. So this file is deep inside the context file system. And let, so if for each time, you know, a uh, protocol or smart contract want to read or set these files deep inside, you know, even if these files in are in the same directory, the, uh, they have to access uh, context systems using full pass for each time. And this is uh, very inefficient. As I have said, Plebeia tree are memory cached. So once uh, nodes are loaded into memory, then there's no need to load the same node again from the disk. So everything uh, goes inside the memory. So it should be uh, much faster than loading things twice or three times from the disk, but still it costs something. And in average, if you want to access these really deep data, uh, deep, really, uh, if you want to access file deep inside the context tree, uh, it requires 36.5 levels of tree going down in average in Plebeia. So we can optimize this uh, access uh, quite, ef quite efficiently using cursors. So let's say uh, using the metafile shell well, command. So uh, using cursor is just like to change the current directory to this uh, to the target directory. Then access the files under this directory using relative relative passes. So this makes so this only requires us uh, uh, just one. A portion of pass name, and uh, this corresponds with uh, just the four levels of tree uh, going down in Plebeia tree. So four and thirty six is really different. So this should be really fast. I hope. And this really help. I we believe that that uh, we believe that this really helps the cost gas cost of smart contracts, uh, since smart contracts often accesses. Uh, data really deep inside uh, under contract or account uh, directory or big maps. It also has really deep uh, con uh, deep structure uh, in a, in a con Tezos context. So this should uh, reduce uh, uh, Tezos smart contract to gas cost even more. So this is a roadmap. So the roadmap can be changed. So we are currently uh, planning how uh, things will be worked out, especially uh, with the cooperation of Taridis. So 
but uh, currently this is what I we are discussing, and at least this is what in my mind. Uh, may, but maybe this can be changed. Anyway, uh, so we are uh, we do like to provide uh, fast context access by a cursor fast, since uh, recently we have found that this technique can be used for uh, current context too. So uh, this will be a rather lower hanging fruit. So we will be. Uh, yeah, we hope that we can release it earlier. And uh, in parallel, of course, we work for uh, integration of Playbear in Irving and Tezos, and the hope that we can finish or uh, release a upgrade of Playbear uh, integrated Tezos in additional or six months in the future. Okay, that's it. So Playbear is for the Tezos context, and it uses Marco Patricia tri based data structure to provide really compact macro proofs. And it's also a data efficiency in a storage in space and time. And it's stable enough. So yeah, we really feel that the time to uh, integrate it and release it. Thank you. Thank you for this nice presentation. Um, all right, so a few questions for the from the audience. So where can I find the F-star and the COG proofs? Are they published on Dilemma GitLab? Or oh, yes, uh, inside, uh, it's inside uh, our repository. Uh, it's a Playbear repository, so it's not that uh, listed. So Playbear is a li as a released as a library too. So it's not a, a branch of Tezos, but uh, it's, it will be inside GitLab called Dai Lambda Playbear. Uh, and uh, well, how, how can I say? <laughs> yeah, it's available in the repository. And if you cannot find it, please ask our contactors. Uh, we can we can well uh, well we can uh, share the uh, correct place with pleasure. All right, thank you. Uh, next question is uh, still about verification and formalization. Um, wh what did you? Try to prove as invariants in your Playbear trees, uh, and as there are some sources available for that. I guess you already answered that. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. So the invariants required in Playbear is uh, documented in its readme, but I can uh, briefly explain uh, what is it. So for example, uh, we cannot have extender under extender. Since if we allow it, we have multiple possibilities to express the same uh, tree structure, you know? And in addition, uh, for example, bud cannot have bud. It's just like directory under directory without any name. So these kind of uh, invariants. So it's a yeah, not a shape of the shape invariants of the Playbear tree, and also uh, there are some uh, property that, for example, if node hash is available, then uh, its sub node hashes must be always available or something like that. So those kind of invariants are exist in a Playbear tree. Uh, they are all proven uh, using F star. OK. And uh, I think this is a follow-up question. Uh, you mentioned that the data structures to be safe under one writer and multiple readers. Uh, are you also working on proving wow. that for me? That's hard to prove. <laughs> Indeed. No, no, there's no plan for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no right. we are not working on it. And uh, I myself have no Currently, I have no idea how to prove it. Yeah. yeah I think that was a good question because, yeah, this is a very yeah, we, problem. We, yeah, theoretically, it's interesting, but mm. yeah, I'm I'm not really a serum proving guy in our team, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, another question is about uh, compressing the data. Did, did you try? To what do you mean compressing data? Oh, uh, we don't. Uh, I mean, leaves, 
leaves have some values, and the values are saved as they are. Since, first of all, they are pretty small. Usually, yeah, uh, almost of all data in Tezos context are smaller than 30, 33 bytes. So there's really no point to compress them. Of course, uh, for storage of uh, smart contract, they can be really huge, but we don't do it for now. Yeah, well, of course, this is yeah, uh, pretty easy to apply, and we, yeah, maybe it's easy to try and see how it changes. But the most of the storage space is used to used for hashes of the node. So yeah, a hash is already maybe, compressed. Maybe there's not really big gain by compressing data of uh, leaves, I, I think. Mm. All right, uh, so question for me, uh, from me. Yep. Uh, what about robustness? Uh, sometimes there can be weird scenarios uh, with IOs, uh, and sometimes when you kill your node, for example, the, the context uh, might be in the middle of a writing, and sometimes it might get corrupted. So. Do you handle that? Uh, how do you handle that? Actually? Okay, so, uh, so so first of all, we use append-only system. So uh, even if something, uh, some write is interrupted in the operation, it never breaks the existing data at all. So we may have some garbage at the end of the file, but it never destroys some some existing data. Okay. And we have uh, to avoid uh, um, to avoid unexpected corruption of data file. We have uh, we have uh, in the header of the player data file. There's a, only one place to mutate, and here we write uh, current uh, meta information. Of the play of the entire player file with hash, and we mm. write this information twice. And if some uh, crash happens, then uh, player can investigate this header information. And if uh, two this information, two of the informations, they are all the same, and has have hash agrees, then we can conclude that there's no uh, corruptions of data happen, okay? And if nice. one disagrees, then maybe uh, we can uh, choose one one thing older, I mean, uh, more conservative uh, assumptions that pro, uh, we, we assume that older metadata is correct. So we use that. So the cost of that is that using the older meta information, then we have to uh, abandon uh, the right written data after this point, but uh, it it keeps a, a correctness of the entire data file. Do, do you uh, do I do I answer your question? Perfectly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so you said that it's not possible to. To have play beyond the, the the legacy context, basically the context uh, happening before the protocol uh, chooses to use uh, play beyond as a new backend. Um, so you said that I mean will be maintaining both backends. For example, if you want to to bootstrap an archive nodes or something like that. Yeah, this is one idea uh, for that. Yeah, so we can maybe slow away. You mean completely under. Uh, switch to play player, but uh, this node cannot verify pre play player blocks. So instead of verifying these blocks, context hash, we can maybe node can carry context hashes of the past, uh, past blocks of which is, which are non verifiable of play player. So uh, we can carry these hashes as oracles, but I'm not. 
I'm not really fond of this kind of idea. If there's a, there are some software which can uh, legally, uh, legally or yeah, you know, properly verify uh, blocks, then I think we should have some code for that. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a preference. Maybe some some people may have some different opinions. Or you could commit to the context, uh, I don't know, an association list of every context from here, I mean, to, to Plebeia, and maybe, yeah. Uh, doing the construct, make sure that it's the same hash or something, but well, it's a, it's a long shot. Um, so, Taridas is working hard on the, the garbage collecting context. Um, are you, is, Plebeia are going to, to be able to handle that as well? Yeah, so uh, this is one point why we we are planning or we are seeking some cooperation with Teridis since uh, they are uh, finishing their garbage collection of the current context, uh, online garbage collection for current context. And the Plebeia lacks it for now. It has on offline garbage collection, but you have to stop the nodes for that. So uh, one good point for the cooperation is that if Plebeia tree can be integrated in Irvin, then we can uh, use make use of their uh, online garbage collection uh, already with them. Yeah. And I think it's a right. good algorithm. Uh, I have had some <laughs> optional slide sorry it's, it's handwritten but uh, it looks like this so uh Irmin and the plebeia both uses append only file system so uh garbage collection has to be copy garbage collection so we cannot use in place gc so uh the idea is well somewhat brilliant uh that as far as i understand that we they have some layers storage and a short time one and the archive one. So uh, short, in a short time, short time storage, they only keep uh, some limited amount of uh, data of recent blockchain and uh, repeatedly they shrink down, you know, uh, throw away all the, all the data. But uh, when they slow away, before they slow away all the data, they uh, perform garbage collection on these old data, then uh, push it to archive a purpose storage. So this kind of layered uh, design of storage should match pretty well with uh, Irmin and uh, Playbay 2. So uh, yeah, I think we can, yeah, you, we can use the same approach or maybe we can, uh, work together with, with Taridis to make use of their uh, existing uh, GC algorithm for that. Uh, okay, so that concludes today's uh, Nomadic Labs research seminar. So again, thank you, Joe. Thank you. It was a very nice presentation. And so the next seminar will be on the OCaml multi-core support for Tezos and it will be uh, do, uh, it will uh, be Anil Madhavapedi who will uh, talk next time. So thanks again everyone and have a good evening. Mm -hmm.